all my sons. Take your word for it now. 
Go out there and keep both eyes peeled. For what? For what, Bert? The whole neighborhood is depending on you. Policemen don't ask questions. Now peel them eyes. Okay. And mum's the word. A about what? <laughs> Just in general. Be very careful. Go, go, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got all these kids crazy. <laughs> Now what's she going to say? Maybe we ought to tell her before she even sees She was out here when it broke. About four this morning. <laughs> She's getting just like after Larry died. Hey, uh, sit down, Dad. I want to talk to you. <coughs> you, uh, you know why I'm standing here, don't you? No. Well, I got an idea. What's the story? I'm going to ask her to marry me. Well, that's only your business, Chris. You know it's not only my business. And what do you want me to do? And sometimes you infuriate me, you know that? Isn't it your business, too, if I tell this to Mother and she throws a fit about it? You have such a talent for ignoring things. I ignore what I gotta ignore. The girl's Larry's girl. She's not Larry's girl. From Mother's point of view, he's not dead. And you have no right to take his girl. She thinks he's coming back, Chris. And you marrying this girl is like pronouncing him dead. Now what's mother going to do? Do you know I don't? I'll get out. Look, I'll get married and live someplace else, maybe in New York. I mean, you, you leave the business? Yes, on this I would. Don't think like that, Chris. Then what the hell did I work for? It's all for you. The whole shooting match is for you. I know that. Dad, just you, help me stay here. No! Hello, Mom. Did you take the bag from under the sink? Oh, yes, I put it in the pail. Well, get it out of the pail! That's my potato! <laughs> I, I thought it was garbage. Do me a favor, Joe. Don't be so helpful. I can afford another bag of potatoes. Oh, I have the funniest pain on the top of my head. Can I, uh, get you an aspirin? I had a terrible night. Oh, I've never had a night like that. What was it, Mom? About Larry. Do you remember the way he used to fly low past the house when he was in training? And we could see his face in the cockpit as he was going by. That's the way I saw him. In the high up. Way, way up where the clouds are. It was so real, I could reach out and touch him. And then he started to fall. I could hear him crying to me, Mom, Mom. I could hear him like he was in the room with me, Mom. It was his voice. And I knew if I could just, if I could just touch him, if I could just reach out and touch him, I could stop him. And then I woke up. And it was so funny. The wind it sounded just like the roaring of his engine. And, and I came outside, and that tree broke right in front of me. And I, and I came awake. See, I told you. We should have never planted that tree for him. It was too soon to plant a tree for him. Too soon? Mother, the wind blew it down. What significance has that got? Get me an aspirin, eh? Sure, and, and let's break out of this, eh? Mom, I thought the four of us might go out to dinner a couple nights. You know, maybe go dancing out at the shore. Fine, <laughs> we can do it tonight. Well, with me. Uh, sure, let's have some fun. You'll start with this aspirin. <laughs> Laugh at me. Laugh. 
Why did that happen the very night she came back? Laugh, but there are meanings in such things. She goes to sleep in his room, and his memorial breaks into pieces. Look at it, look! Calm yourself. Joe, you above all, because I believe in you. Hiya, Joe. <laughs> Take a breath of that air, kid. You never get her like that in New York. Oh. Isn't she the most gorgeous? Just like gorgeous. No, now, isn't she the prettiest gal you ever saw? You gained a little weight, haven't you, darling? <laughs> it comes and goes. Let's date at the shore tonight. Like we used to before Larry was. You remember him? I mean, he, he's in your thoughts? How could I help remembering him? And uh, you go out much? You mean, am I still waiting for him? Yes. Well, I'm not, Kate. Oh, but Annie, deep, deep in your heart, you've always been waiting for him. No, Kate. But deep in your heart, Annie, why does your heart tell you he's alive? Because he has to be. No, Kate. I have to have some tea. Annie? How are you? <laughs> she wins. My friend, you're losing your hair. <laughs> your brother got his degree, I hear. Oh, George, he has his own office now. Don't say, and your father, is he? Fine, I'll be in to see Lydia. So how about it? Is Dad expecting a parole soon? I really don't know why. I mean, because I feel, you know, well, if an intelligent man like your father is put in prison, well, they ought to make a law that says you either execute him or let him go after him. Uh, do you want to <laughs> have that last break? Oh, no, no thanks. I'll just be on my way. Annie, you look wonderful. Do they still talk about Dad? No, nobody talks about him anymore. Do they talk about you? No, the, the only one who still talks about it is my wife. That's because you keep on playing police with all the neighborhood kids. <laughs> all their parents ever hear about is jail, jail, jail. Actually, what happened was, the day I came home from the penitentiary, the kids, they, they thought I was like the expert on the jail situation. <laughs> Look, you do like I did and you'll be all right. The day I came home, everybody knew I was getting out. The porches were loaded. <laughs> no one believed I was innocent. So I, I walked down the street slowly, but with a smile. <laughs> the, the beast, I was the beast. The man who, who sold the crack cylinder heads to the Army Air Force. The man who made 21 P-40s crash in Australia. Kid, walking down the street that day, I was guilty as hell. Except I wasn't. I had a court paper in my pocket to prove I wasn't. Result, 14 months later, I had one of the big, biggest businesses in the state again. A respected man again. Bigger than ever. Joe McGuts. And that's the way you lick on his guts. <laughs> the worst thing you did is move away from here. You made it hard on your father when he gets out. Don't you hold anything against him? Annie, I, I never believed in crucifying people. But he was your partner. He dragged you through the mud. Well, he ain't my sweetheart. But you've got to forgive, don't you? I've never written to him. Neither has my brother. Say, do you feel this way too? You murdered 21 pilots. Uh, the, the man was a fool. But don't make a murder out of him. You, you've got no sense. Look at what it does to him. Listen, you gotta respect what that man was doing in that shop in the war. Every half hour, the major was calling for cylinder heads. So a, a bounce comes out with a crack, all right? That happens, that's business. A fine airline crack. So he takes out his tools and he covers over the cracks. All right, that's bad, that's wrong, but that's what a little man does. It's a mistake, but it ain't murder. You mustn't feel that way about him. You you understand me? It ain't right. Joe, let's forget it. And the, the day news came in about Larry, your father was in the cell right next to mine. Dad, he, he cried half the night. He should have cried all night. I like that girl. Wrap her up.
You're the only one I know who still loves his parents. <laughs> I know. It went out of style, didn't it? That's all right. It's a good thing. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not sorry you came. Not sorry, no, but I'm not going to stay. And? I love you. I, I love you a great deal. I, gosh, I, I love you. I, I have no imagination. <laughs> this is all I know to tell you. But you feel it's wrong here, don't you? I, I want you to be ready for me. I don't want to win you away from anything. Chris, I've been ready a long, long time. But then he's gone, forever. Wait, are you sure? I was waiting for you, Chris. I kissed you, Eddie. <laughs> I kissed Eddie. How long, how long I've been waiting to kiss you. Why did you wait all these years? What is it, Chris, your mother? No. Nothing like that. It's all mixed up with so many other things. You remember overseas, I was in command of a company? Sure. Well, I lost them. It takes a little time to toss that off. Those guys that I had, they killed themselves for each other. I came home. There was no meaning in it here. I, I felt wrong to be alive, to open the bank book, to drive the new car, to, to raid the new refrigerator. I, I didn't want to take any of it, and, and I guess that included you. And you still feel that way? I want you now, Annie. What is this, Labor Day? Oh, right, right. <laughs> you shouldn't burst out like that. I'll wear a bell around my neck. <laughs> George, you, you, you kissed it right out of my head. Your, your, your brother's on the phone, long distance. My brother? Hurry up. <laughs> We're getting married, Dad. Well, don't you say anything? I'm, I'm glad, Chris. Look, I'll go to work on Mother for you, okay? We'll, we'll get her so drunk tonight, we'll all get married. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a wedding like no one's ever seen, kid. Champagne, tuxedos! <laughs> Something happened? Is he coming down? On the seven o'clock, he's in Columbus. Your father took sick. No, George didn't say he was sick. I don't know. I suppose it's something stupid. You know my brother. Let's go for a drive or something. Sure. Be back right away. See you. Take your time. What does George want? He's been in Columbus since this morning with Steve. He says he's got to see Anne right away, he says. What for? He's a lawyer now, Joe. So what? Be smart now, Joe. That boy is coming. Be smart. Mary, get are you? George, well, you said You're not me. going to marry him. Why am I not going to marry him? Because his father destroyed your family. Now, look, George. Cut it short, Chris. Tell him to come home with me. Let's not argue. You know what I've got to say. Wait, if you've got something to say, be civilized about it. 
I wanted to go to Dad and tell him you were going to be married. He loved you so much. Annie, we did a terrible thing. We can never be forgiven. I didn't see him once since I got home from the war. Annie, you don't know what was done to that man. Of course I know. You can't know. You wouldn't be here. Dad came to work that day. The night foreman came to him and showed him the cylinder heads. They were coming out of the process with defects. So Dad went directly to the phone and called here and told Joe to come down right away. But the morning passed. No sign of Joe. By this time, he had over 100 defectives. The army was screaming for stuff. And Dad didn't have anything to ship. So Joe told him. On the phone, he told him to, well, cover up the cracks in any way he could and ship them. Wait, out. are you through now? No, through now. Dad was afraid. He wanted Joe there. He was going to do it. But Joe can't come down. He's sick. Sick. He suddenly gets the flu. Suddenly. But he promised to take responsibility. Do you understand what I'm saying? On the phone, you can't have responsibility. In a court, you can always deny a phone call, and that's exactly what he did. Now, what are you going to do? Eat his food, sleep in his bed? Answer me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, George? He's too smart for me. I, I can't prove a phone call. Then how dare you come in here with that rise? George, the, court. the court didn't know your father, but you know him. You know in your heart Joe did it. your voice, or I will throw you she out knows. Here. She knows. The court record was good enough for you all these years. Why isn't it good now? Huh? Why did you believe it? Because you believed it. That's the truth, Chris. But today I heard it from his mouth. Your dad took everything we have. I can't beat that. But she is one item he's not going to grab. Get your things. Everything they have is covered with blood. You're not the kind of a girl who can live with that. Get your things. You know it's not true. How can he tell you it's his father? None of these things ever even crossed your mind. Yes, they crossed my mind. Anything can cross he your mind. He knows, Annie. You see? Oh, <laughs> oh, you haven't changed at all. You know oh, that, Kate. None of us have changed. We all still love you. Did you get him his juice? Get him his juice. The train leaves at 8.30, and Oh, you're leaving? No, she's not, Mother. Well, Chris, if they can't stay. Well, no, it's just a question of George, Mother. Wait a minute, Chris. Look. If you want to go, I will drive you to the station. But if you're staying, no arguments while you're here. Why should he argue? We all got hit by the same lightning. Have you seen my Larry's tree, Georgie? Imagine. Well, I was dreaming of him in the middle of the night. The wind came along and blew it over. Georgie? Georgie! Hello, Lappy. <laughs> <laughs> what you do, bro? I'm a big girl now. Oh, you should see what she can do with a hat. <laughs> oh, I only rearranged it. She is a genius. You should have married her. This one should feed you. <laughs> Stop that, Kate. Uh, didn't I hear you had a baby? Oh, you didn't hear so good. She's got three. <laughs> <laughs> You've been away a long time, Georgie. Would you like to see my babies? I, I don't think so, Lydia. All right. Good luck to you, Georgie. Thanks. And to you. Uh, and, uh, Frank. You've gotten pretty, huh? Very pretty. Mm -hmm. oh, well, oh, look who's here. Hey, Georgie. It's, it's good to see you. How are you, Joe? Oh, I'm so so. I'm getting old. <laughs> are you coming out to dinner with us? No. Gotta be back in New York. I'll call a cab for you. Oh, that's too bad, Georgie. Sit down. Uh, he looks fine. He looks terrible. Oh, that's what I said. You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the pants, and she beats me with the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I never felt at home anywhere but here. <laughs> I feel so... <laughs> Kate, you look so young, you know? <laughs> you too, Joe. You're amazingly the same. Oh, say, I ain't got time to get sick. He hasn't been laid up in 15 years. <laughs> Except my flu during the war. Huh? My flu when I was sick during the war. Yes, sure, I meant except for that time. He wanted to go to the shop, but he couldn't lift himself off the bed. I thought he had pneumonia. Why did you say he's never been sick? Now look, kid, I'll never forgive myself. If, if I could go back that day, I'd never let Dad touch She me. said you've never been sick. I said he was sick, George. Annie, didn't you hear her say that? He, Do you he, remember every time you were sick? I remember pneumonia. Especially if I got it just the day my partner was going to patch up cylinder heads. What happened that day, Joe? They'll be right out, driver! She's not leaving, mother. I packed your bag, darling. He asked me here, and I'm staying until he tells me to go. Hey, until honey. Chris tells me. Now get out of here, George. You tell me. I want to hear you tell me. Go, George! Georgie, wait! I didn't mean it that way! Chris, she doesn't belong here. She is Larry's girl. And I am his brother. He is dead, and I am Mary, his girl! Never, never in this world! Have you lost your mind! You have nothing to say to me! Oh, I've got plenty to say! For three and a half years, you've been talking like a maniac. <laughs> nothing! Nothing to say! No, I say he is coming back, and everyone has got to wait. I will never let him go, and you will never let him go. I've let him go. Then let your father go. She's out of her mind. Chris, that boy is alive, because if he's not, your father killed him. Do you understand me? Every day that you live, that boy is alive. God does not let a son be killed by his father. Now you see. Don't you now, you see? She's out of her mind. He never flew a P-40. She's out of her mind! Dad. You did it? He never flew a P-40. What's the matter with him? you killed 21 men? I didn't kill anybody. Then explain it to me! What did you do? Dad, explain it to me or I'll tear you to pieces! I'm in the business! 120 cracked and you're out of business! Now what could I do? Let them take 40 years. Let them take my life away! I, I never thought that they'd install them. I swear to God, I thought they'd stop them before anybody took off. Then why did you ship them out? By the time they, they could spot them, I thought I'd have the process going again, it, and I could show them they needed me, and they'd let it go by. But weeks passed, and I got no kickback. So I was going to tell then them. why didn't you tell them? It was too late. The paper, it was all over the front page. 21 went down. It was too late. They came with handcuffs into the shop, Chris. What could I do? Chris? Chris, I did it for you. I, I mean, it was a chance, and, and I took it for you, and you get another chance to. You even knew they would hold us in the air? What kind of a man are you? Kids were hanging in the air by those heads. You knew that. Are you a business for you? For me! I was dying! Every day. And you were killing my boys and you did it for me. Is that as far as your mind can see the business? What the hell do you mean you did it for me? You're not even an animal. No animal kills his own. What are you? I ought to tear the tongue out of your mouth. What must I do? Chris. Chris! Why don't you go to bed? I'm waiting.
waiting for Chris. I can't sleep. You had an emergency? Yeah. Someone had a headache and thought he was dying. Kate, what happened? I had an argument with Joe. He was crying like a child. What did Joe do? Tell him? Tell him what? Don't be afraid, Kate. I know. I've always known. going to do something for me. You made Chris feel guilty with me. I'd like you to tell him that Larry's dead and that you know it. You understand me? I'm not going out here alone again. There's no life for me that way. I want you to set him free. And then I promise you everything will end and we'll go away and that's all, my dear. If that boy was dead, it wouldn't depend on my words to make Chris know it. Because he knows, and you know. Larry is dead, Kate. Don't speak to me. I said he's dead. I know. He crashed off the coast of China November 25th. His engine didn't fail him, but he died. I know. What are you talking about? Sit down. First, you've got to understand. I didn't bring this to hurt you. I thought I'd show it to you. Only there was no other way of, of settling Larry in your mind. Larry? He wrote it to me just before he... I'm not trying to hurt you, Kate. You're making me do this. I've been so lonely, Kate. I can't leave here alone again. You made me show it to you. You wouldn't believe me. I told you a hundred times. Why wouldn't you believe me? Oh my God. Mother, I'm going away. Tell him. Let him go, Annie. I won't let him go, and you'll tell him what he's got to do. Annie? Then I will. What the hell's the matter with you? I want to talk to you. There is nothing to say. What do you want me to do? It's not what I want to do. It's what you want to do. Do you want me to go to jail? Is that where I belong? Then tell me so. Go on. You say everything else, say that! I don't belong there because you know who worked for nothing in that war, Chris. Half the damn country's gotta go if I go. That's why you can't tell me that is exactly why. Then why am I bad? I know you're no worse than most men, but I thought you were better. I never saw you as a man. I saw you as my father. And I can't look at you this way. I can't even look at myself. Give me that. He's going to read it. 
Larry, he wrote it to me the day he died. Chris, it's not for you. Joe, go to the street. Don't go, go to the street. Chris, don't tell him. Just don't tell him, please. Three and one half years. Talking. Talking. This is how he died. Now tell me where you belong. There's a man can't be Jesus in this world. I know all about the world. Now you listen and you tell me what a man has got to be. My dear Anne, are you listening? He wrote this the day he died. Listen. My dear Anne, it is impossible to put down the things I feel, but I've got to tell you something. Yesterday they flew in a load of papers from the States, and I read about Dad and your father being convicted. I can't tell you how I feel. I can't bear to live and How could he have done that? I can't face anybody. I'm going out on a mission in a few minutes. They'll probably report me missing. If they do, I want you to know that you mustn't wait for me. I tell you, Anne, if I had him here now, I could kill him. Now, Blame the world. Do you understand that letter? I think I do. Get the car. I'll go put on my jacket. Why are you going? I'll go better if I go. You're so foolish. Blair was your son too, wasn't he? He would never tell you to do this. And what is that if it isn't telling me? Sure, he was my son. But I think to him, they were all my sons. And, and I guess they were. I guess they were. I'll be right down. You are not going to take him. I'm taking him. If it's up to you, he'll stay. Now go and tell Nobody him. can stop him now. You can stop him. Do you know how long he'll last in prison? Are you trying to kill I him? I thought you read Did this. Did you hear? The war is over. It's over. Then what was Larry to you? Oh, a stone that fell into the water? It's not enough for him to be sorry. Larry didn't kill himself to make you and Dad sorry. What more can we be? You can be better. Once and for all, you can know that there is a universe of people outside, and you're responsible to it. And unless you know that, then you threw away your son. Because that is why he died. <coughs> Find him. Joe! 